بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا It's a pleasure to be here in your beautiful country this small island where wherever you drive you find water just in a matter of a few minutes uh, and also to see these beautiful faces some of you I saw this morning for Jumu'ah and others I'm seeing for the first time so to all of you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and the topic that uh, I had chosen was the life and times or the life and time of Saeed Nursi. The wonder of our times or of the time. The legend of our times or the legend of time in general. Now, there are a lot of different figures. There are a lot of different people. There are a lot of different scholars. There are a lot of different conquerors. There's lots of very important figures within the history of Islam. But oftentimes when we look at these important figures in the history of Islam, we consider them simply historical figures. That's it. And it becomes hard for us to connect ourselves to the lives of these figures. Why? Because they are a thousand years ago, uh, 1400 years ago. The shaitan tells us all sorts of excuses and says, those were people and they're gone. You're living in a different situation. You're living in a different time. Your situation is a lot different. And for that reason, I thought that to really feel connected to the legends, let's take a look at a legend who happens to be a legend that perhaps our very parents were alive when he was alive. Perhaps our grandparents were going through all of the same trials that that he went through. Perhaps some of us sitting in this room were alive when this man was also alive and well and doing something for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. That man, his name is Badi'u Zaman, or rather his laqab, his title is Badi'u Zaman. Sa'id ibn Mirza al Nursi al Kurdi al Turki. The Kurdish and the Turkish, right? And he was born in the year 1877. In the eastern part of modern day Turkey, in a small village which was known as Nurs. And this man, at a very young age, he began, he began to, to seek knowledge. And the reason for that was because he saw his brother, who was going out of his way, after his parents had encouraged him to do so, he was going to learn in a school. And it wasn't something that every single person would be doing. Historically, nowadays we have binding education for 12 years, everyone has to go through it, right? At that time, that was not necessarily the case. But his brother, he noticed that every time he comes back for the breaks, he notices that he, there's something different about his brother over the rest of the children in the town, right? So that gave him an insight into the fact that studying and education is going to develop something important out of people as it's doing for my brother and naturally for me as well. So from a very young age, he had his direction ready. He wanted to go and he wanted to learn. At the age of nine, he was admitted into those makeshift schools of old and also till today in Africa and other places called the Kutab or Maktab. He was placed in the school. And he tried studying, but it didn't quite work out. Because he was a person of a very strong demeanor and resolve. Okay? And for that reason, he didn't get along with people at school, essentially. So he had to come home. And now, as he's at home, he has to learn. He still wants to learn. So he starts learning with his brother in the breaks. One uh, book after another, one thing after another, the letters, the language, then uh, different uh, Islamic subjects and so on and so forth. Later on he joins, not to 
in his early teens, he joins a school to actually now go through an, a complete study of the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. To learn Islamic sciences as the scholars of Islam study, as the students of Islam study. And normally as we know, in most curriculums of Islamic studies, it takes five, six, seven, eight, sometimes even more than that years to really complete a program, right? Of Islamic sciences. The brothers told me over here, it takes around six years to go through the madrasa curriculum, right? This person, he was so sharp and his memory was almost photographic memory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had gifted him to a degree that in three months he completed the entire curriculum. To a degree that literally his teacher started to entitle him at the age of 14. He called him Mullah Sa'id. No longer was he just called Sa'id al Nursi. He was now called Mullah Sa'id at a very, very young age, at the age of 14. Okay? Now, of course, there were some things he'd already studied with his brother, as we said, right? But when he got to the actual school, he was able to go through very, very large portions of, in, of information at, in a very short period of time because A, he had very good analytical skills and B, he had very good memory as well. And one of the signs of this individual's amazing memory was what Mullah Fathullah, his, one of his teachers, writes in his book, in his textbook that he was studying from called Jam'ul Jawami'. Jam'ul Jawami' is a book on Usul al Fiqh, which is normally studied over a course of two or three or more years and divided over different semesters. So Mullah Sa'id, he picked up this book and his teacher says, Qajama'a fi hivlihi Jam'ul Jawami'. Jami'ahu fi Jumu'a. فَجَّمَعَ فِي حِفْظِهِ جَمْعَ الْجَوَامِعَ جَمِعَهُ فِي جُمْعَةً He ended up memorizing all of this جَمْعَ الْجَوَامِعَ within one Jumu'ah, i.e. within one week, from a Jumu'ah to another, okay? He memorized all of this, just in that short, brief period of time. Memory, this is something that is, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses people at different junctions in history. And I'll tell you what type of a junction this was. And I'm not picking this topic just because I picked it. I'm picking it very, very carefully. As we need to develop ourselves in more than just hearing about the basics. Of course, there's nothing that we have, we should look down upon within the religion. But our thought needs to be developed. We need to develop our perception of the world. This particular life, or this particular individual in his life will really develop your your perception of the world around you. Because what occurred during this time really affected almost uh, the entire world. Okay? And he was one of the key factors within this entire equation. So, because of this, he was given the title, The Wonder of Times. Or The Wonder of Time. Badi'u zaman Right? Because he was able to memorize so fast and understand. One of the narrations about his life have it that he was exiled from a city at a very young age, still in his teens, late teens now. And he ended up going to a, uh, a small dome, right? They used to have these zawaya and takaya where people could just simply station themselves to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And there would be, you know, books and so on and so forth. So he stationed himself in one of the, such places and he found himself a copy of Al-Qamus Al-Muhid. The dictionary, one of the Arabic dictionaries, old dictionary from the 8th, 9th century perhaps. He memorized the dictionary from the beginning till the chapter of Seen. Alif Ba and all the way down to a Seen. He memorized it within a matter of three months. So this is exceptional memory, okay? And of course, in addition to that, over his travels and so on and so forth, he ended up picking up uh, 90 different odd books that he committed to memory, in addition to the dozens, if not hundreds, that he had read. This is a little bit about his early education, okay? Or a little bit about his education in general. One of the things that we're going to notice throughout his life is that he has three qualities which are unique about him, which can be seen at every junction in his life. 
The first one is patience. He's going to go through trials after trials after trials after trials. But he will remain patient. And another one is truthfulness. He will always stay true to his message that he believes to be his message. And the third one is sincerity. And even when he is going to, we'll see, as he's trying to look at the world around him and make sense of why Muslims are going through these trying and difficult times. What are those trying and difficult times? I'll be speaking about that as well in a very, very short period of time. Anyways, after his early education, he moved out to out of Kurdistan, right? He was in the eastern part of modern day Turkey, which is also used to be called Kurdistan, right? He moved out of there. He moved to the city of Mardin, and then he moved to a number of different cities, which is slightly north of uh, Syria. And uh, now he's exposing himself to the outside world, right? Now he's understanding really what the Western influences, the European influences, what they are doing to the rest of the Ottoman Empire, not his particular location where he had come from, but the rest of the, the world. Now he's starting to debate with people who are non-Muslims. Now he's starting to discuss and converse with people who have been afflicted by modern philosophies and theologies and so on and so forth, things he had never seen before. But of course he's well equipped with the Qur'an committed to his memory, 90 odd books committed to his memory, a very sharp mind to begin with, analytical skills and so on and so forth. So he's able to gather a lot of this information, make sense of it and correct it in the wisest of ways. He moves from a city to another, to another and to another. Until he finally, uh, or one of the cities that he stations himself at, is the city of Van in the year 1897. Okay, 1897. So he's around 20 years of age now. And during this period of stay in this new city that he's in, he has been given the privilege of being uh, a, having access to the house of the governor. There, there's a big library. So he goes and benefits from this library. But in this library, there happens to be books which are imported from uh, Britain, which are imported from other parts of Europe.